Hello friends, this video on light part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us look at some of the questions. Question number one. Suppose you are in a dark room. Can you see objects in the room? Can you see objects outside the room? Explain. So what would happen if you are in a dark room? So see, this room has light, so you are able to see objects. But the moment you make it dark, you will not be able to see anything because light enables us to see. So only if light is present, reflection of light happens. And if the reflected ray reaches our eyes, we are able to see that object. So obviously inside the dark room, we cannot see the objects. We will be able to see the objects outside the room only if there is presence of light, only if there is light. If outside the room also it is all dark, then obviously we are not going to see anything there also. Question number two. Differentiate between regular and diffused reflection. Does diffused reflection mean the failure of the laws of reflection? So re regular and diffused. Regular reflection will occur from smooth surface, whereas diffused reflection from rough surface in regular reflection, proper image formation takes place, but in diffused reflection, no images will be formed because in diffused reflection, the reflected rays get scattered. So this is how diffused reflection happens. You see, the rays get scattered. So there is no one point where all the rays meet or appear to meet. In regular reflection, reflected rays are parallel if incident rays are parallel. So if all the incident rays are parallel, in case of regular reflection, the reflected ones will also be parallel to each other. But in case of diffuse reflection, you can see it. The incident rays are parallel, but the reflected ones are all scattered in various directions. So that's how we can differentiate. Now, the laws of reflection are never a failure. It holds true for all types of surfaces. It is just that in case of a rough surface, the normal drawn at each point is different. So you see, if you draw normal here, it will be like this. If you norm draw the normal to this point, it will be like this. If you not draw a normal to this point. So since the normal is different for each point, therefore the reflected ray gets as uh, I mean, the reflected ray goes in a different direction. But at each of these points, if you see, the laws of reflection are true. So if you consider point A, so for A, you will see angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Incident ray, reflected ray and normal all lie on the same plane. So both the laws hold true for each of the point on the rough surface. It is just that the reflected rays, they all get scattered from each other because the normal for each of the point is different. So in diffused reflection surface is rough, laws of reflection hold true due to irregularities on the surface, reflected rays scatter in different directions. Question number three. Mention against each of the following whether regular or diffused reflection will take place when a beam of light struck. Justify your answer in each case. So you have so many different objects. Now which of them do you think is smooth enough for regular reflection to take place. Now, wherever regular reflection will take place, image formation will take place. So obviously mirror is the one where regular reflection takes place because we can see our image in a mirror. But if you look at any of the others, they everywhere diffused reflection take place because polished wooden table, even though the table is polished, it appears to be smooth, but deep down there are irregularities there. And that is why on the polished wooden table, you do not see a clear image of yours. Chalk powder again rough, cardboard surface is again rough, marble floor with water spread over it. Obviously it is slippery, it is smooth, but it is not smooth enough to uh, see an image of yours. So even though you see a blurred image, but not a proper image. Piece of paper, obviously not. So all of these will fall under the category of diffused reflection. Question number four, state the laws of reflection. So that's quite simple. The first law is the incident ray, reflected ray and normal all lie in the same plane. So these three, they will lie in the same plane and angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection. Question number five. Fill in the blanks in the following. A person one meter in front of a plane mirror 
seems to be dash metered from his image. So let us suppose this is the person and this is the mirror. And where is he seeing the image? Behind the mirror. So the image, he is seeing his image in the mirror, but this image is actually behind the mirror. So the distance of the object from the mirror is equal to the distance of the image from the mirror. Right? So that means when if the object is one meter from the mirror, the image is also one meter from the mirror. So in that case, the person is how much meters away from the image? Two meters. So it is going to be two. If you touch your dash ear with right hand in front of a plain mirror, it will be seen in the mirror that your right ear is touched with. Now here comes the concept of lateral inversion. Now, whatever, I mean, your right appears to be left in the mirror, your left appears to be right in the mirror. So if you touch your which ear with right hand now this right hand is going to be seen as left hand in the mirror correct so that means if you touch your left ear with your right hand then in the mirror you will see the left ear as right ear so that is why it is right ear and how will you see your right hand your right hand will be seen as left hand right because you are touching your using your right hand. So this right hand will be seen as left hand. Correct? And since in the mirror it is your right ear, that means in reality it is your left ear. The size of the pupil becomes dash when you see in dim light. So when there is less light, what happens to pupil? Pupil wants more and more light to come in because anyways there is uh, insufficient light. So the size of the pupil increases. So size of the pupil becomes more when you see in dim light. And when you see direct in bright sunlight, it then it tends to become smaller because it doesn't allow all the sunlight to enter inside your eye. Night birds have dash cones than rods in their eyes. So rods help in night vision, helps to see objects in less light or dim light. And cones help in colored vision or daylight vision. Now night birds, they want to see at night. So they will have more number of rods. So they have less number of cones than rods in their eyes. Question number six. Angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So this holds true always, sometimes under special conditions, never. But this holds true always, whether irrespective of the kind of surface, angle of incidence will always be equal to the angle of reflection. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.